Hello everybody, my name is Lukmar and this is Hot Lum Mode and today on Hot Mode we are coming to you with the Billboard Music Awards 2022 Red Carpet Roast and Review. Without further ado, let's get into it. Also, I just want to say if you like hear my voice and you're like, Luke, you sound terrible. Allergies are kicking the shit out of my trachea as we speak, so apologies everyone. So first up we have Anita and she is wearing Versace, which is also a collaboration collection with Fendi. It's called Fen Fendace. I think is what we're calling an Aversendi. I like Versendi, but also Fendace. Continuing. It's essentially a very light, dusty pink Oraton gown. It, it's fitted pretty well, as well as like Oraton, I think will fit. It has a double strap situation. And what we've been seeing a lot is these little Versace sort of Medusa medallions on, you know, straps and things like that. But the Medusa medallion is actually sandwiched in between two little Fendi double F logos. Those are originally invented by Karl Lagerfeld and then Kim Jones at Fendi now is, he's always trying to rework them. Throughout the Oraton, we have what looks like, like a crystallized Oraton of some sort, but you can see that there's the Versace sort of V little logo. And then we also have the double F logo sort of throughout in different little bits and bobs. I like the color of the Oraton. I think that it fits honestly pretty well. I don't think that Anita needs to do too, too much in like the fashion department to be super stylish, but I do feel like the adding of the monogram elements to it isn't really super exciting. I feel like there could be a way to sort of incorporate the Fendi house codes into an Oraton dress in a way that's rather smart and intellectual and fun and interesting and not just a double F logo so everybody knows that it's also Fendi-fied. I don't think it's bad on the straps. I think it's actually smart to do it there. It's a really subtle nod to the house codes and all of that sort of stuff, but with Fendi, I just feel like we could have done something a little bit smarter. You know what I mean? Not just so obvious. And that's my only real issue with the dress is it's a beautiful dress, fits well, great Versace house codes. I just think we should have worked a little bit harder to incorporate a Fendi house code that's not so blatant and in your face because it just sort of feels awkward and weird and annoying. And that's my only issue. Otherwise, I think it's a nice dress. Nothing too, too crazy, but Nice dress. Next up we have Brittany Broski and she's wearing Melissa Mercedes. Now this is a crop top turtleneck in a little crystallized dark deep forest green. I think the color actually works. It looks like it's black to a degree, but at the same time it's green. And then a high-waisted skirt that's ruched to a degree and then has a high slit. Honestly, I feel like Brittany Broski normally whenever I see her on a red carpet. It's a little bit more like kitschy and campy, which I think as a comedian is fine. I think it makes sense. I think it's always fun to sort of play into a joke. But I also like the fact that when she's doing something a little bit more sexy, nice, fitted, it looks good. Listen, I don't think since Selena Gomez and then Oscar de la Renta two-piece set that looks like a dress from the SAG Awards that we're gonna be getting away from this like crop top, high-waisted skirt duo on the red carpet anytime soon. I think it fits well, honestly. I think the ruching is Fine, I think it makes sense where it is. It's sort of leading down to the slit. I also just like the fact that she's not afraid to like go in and do bodycon. I also feel like celebrities that are a lot more curvy often given these like tent dresses that are really awkward and weird and like don't flatter the body or like fit to the body. So I like to see that with Britney, she's going for it. And I think that it honestly works out. I like the fact that there's like a defined waist area, but it's not like a cinched corset making it an hourglass figure. No, like it rather is just a sliver of skin that gives you that ability to be like, oh, waist, love. Do I want like more exciting, more interesting, more fun moments with great sort of references and history? And of course, absolutely. But I also like the fact that here in this moment, we're just getting a nice, hot, sexy, look at me kind of experience. And it works. Next up is Chloe Bailey and she's wearing Valdrin Sahidi. I don't know, I feel like I'm being so nice in this video, but I, I don't like hate this, shockingly. I think the little sharp shoulders work pretty well. I think the cutout is also rather nice. Weirdly enough, I think the way that it cuts in and exposes the midriff area and a little bit of like upper thigh works. And then the rest of the dress is covered from head to toe. Like there's a full glove built into the dress. The rest of it really does fit. We're not like doing anything else that's trying to like take attention away from the fact that this midriff cutout is the part of the dress that we're looking at. And I think that's the smart thing. Like if you're gonna do some sort of, oh, eye-catching motif and or cutout and or decorative applique or whatever, that should be the main focus, not 
at the sleeve and also at the shin and also at the foot and also at the arm. Just let the one moment that is the moment be the moment. And this is a good example of she's just the moment. I think the gold bangles that are layered are a very, 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 very good way of going about sort of doing accessorization. We have the gold earrings and the cuffs and all that. And there's a little hair piece. So like the gold is all sort of playing into itself. And honestly, like I do think that that cutout, while I don't love an asymmetry, actually is like a little bit exciting, chic and cool. The underwear underneath, if it's a part of the dress, it has a bit of slack, which is giving that sort of textural aspect. And I understand obviously we can't get it down to the science, but like a little bit of a flatter surface there, a little bit less texture. But besides that, the way that it fits at the bust, the way that the shoulders have that like little subtle 1940s like sharp angular motion is great. And then the skirt fits really, really well too. The sleeves fit quite well as well. Overall, like Shout out to Chloe Bailey. I'm into the vibe, think it works. Next up we have Dan and Shay. Let's talk about Shay first. Now he is wearing what looks like a sort of navy blue suit with a little motifed shirt. I'm not sure who it's by, but I think the motif is kind of cute. No tie. We got a matching pant and a black shoe. The shoe, I feel like we could have chose differently. Black with like that very dark blue, I don't think works here. And then also like we did the white. So like maybe we had gone for like a white shoe that could have worked out well, could have worked out better. Funky, you know, rest of the suit, fine. But the shoe game, we could expand upon. As for Dan, I think he's like the fashionista of the duo. He's wearing a sort of bright purple suit, which honestly like I respect. I think it's nice, I think the color pops. He always sort of goes for a little bit fashion forwardness. We have a little white sort of t-shirt underneath it looks like it's a knit of some sort and the pants fit fine and then he has a little bit of a boot thank god it has a little bit of a heel so it's even better it's like a heeled boot you know you climb up the ladder more points i do think the boot though not that it clashes but i don't think it cohesively works with the rest of the look it's just a little bit too angular and sharp whereas i feel like we needed something a little less pointed you know what i mean i'm not saying like a square toe could have worked a curved toe could have worked but i feel like the pointed with the rest of the look the orange and the white shirt just doesn't collaborate all that well but i appreciate it regardless next up we have diddy and he is wearing jacob lee now it's essentially a sort of off-white creamy double-breasted suit nothing too crazy going on double-breasted suit very simple it fits well enough especially for like a double breasted aspect i think what's interesting is the way that diddy is sort of showcasing on the sleeves how many buttons there are it's not sort of your normal buttonage normally it's like four maybe five i think the eight buttons is actually kind of like a nice little detail it's something that we wouldn't normally see and for menswear in a traditional sense subtle details are usually the fashion forward e sort of way to do it so i kind of like the button detail nothing crazy nothing kooky i do wish the shoe was better a little black shoe it's like a Chelsea boot, which is like, okay. But also I feel like the pants don't really fit the Chelsea boot perfectly. And by perfectly, I mean kind of at all. It looks kind of awkward and strange and it's kind of like pooling or like tucked in. It just, it doesn't look like we, we futzed it before we got onto the carpet. So I'm kind of hoping that honestly we like fix that. I just wish that we had gone for something like a little bit more exciting. Maybe like a white boot could have worked out really, really well. I think it would have just taken the look into a, I don't believe and you can only wear white after Memorial Day kind of vibe. And I would respect that for Diddy. But honestly, I think the jacket fits really, really well from the jacket down, questionable. But at least the jacket looks nice. Next up, we have Dixie D'Amelio. She's wearing off-white. Now this is from the fall 2022 collection and it's essentially a sort of crystallized turtleneck cocktail dress with quite a lot of draping, but it sort of moves in and out in like a zigzag pattern. So it gathers sort of one way and then it gathers another and then it gathers again and then it sort of overlap with fabric. And so it's pretty much just a heavily textured cocktail dress. Thing is when you look when it's on the runway, it has a little nice sort of chartreuse shearling jacket over top. It has like a big sort of furry handbag. And I think my issue with Dixie is it feels like we're not pushing ourselves in like a fashion way like yes we put on off-white that's great love that shout out virgil r.i.p to a legend but what else is going on here it's a turtleneck cocktail dress that unless it's set off white we'd be sitting here like oh it looks like whatever collection off sheen there's nothing here that like stands out as a oh wow dixie's wearing off white now i know people are gonna be like that's not dixie's fault but it is because like where was the jacket where was the bag where was the ooh ah fashion sensation there just there was none and that's my issue it's like yeah listen i get wearing a shearling in los angeles this time of year is probably like not super comfortable but like you're gonna be on the carpet for how long you get out of the car that's air conditioned you get on the carpet 
you wear the shearling, you get off the carpet, you take it off. Not that difficult, not that hard, not that stressful. And then you don't have to put it on for the rest of the time. But for the carpet, just do something exciting and interesting and memorable. It's not that hard. I appreciate that she's working her way, but we still have a long way to go. And that's my problem with Dixie. Take a risk. Next up we have Doja Cat and she's wearing Scaparelli. Now this is from the spring 2022 Haute Couture collection. It's stunning. I think this is probably one of Doja Cat's best looks yet. And it's in that fun sort of campy sense of like it's Doja Cat. So there's gonna be that like weird, crazy, kooky element to it. But at the same time, like this is a stunning, stunning gown. You can tell that that is haute couture level fit. Phenomenal, like look at her waist. Not an iota of extra fabric. That gown fits her phenomenally. And then on top of it, you have this low, 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 low scooping neckline. But at the same time, the two sort of ends, which would look like straps of the gown, essentially sort of lift up and, and don't create straps at all. To me, it has a very sort of surrealist feeling to it. You know what I mean? There's just elements of the unconscious. And so your straps that are supposed to sit on your shoulders actually like float, almost like they don't belong to gravity. That's where I would look at it from. And now like the look on the runway, it does have a little sort of chiffon gathered placement over the top of the bust. And then there's like a gold sort of nipple pasty. The little gold pasties, I think, are great at keeping in touch with Daniel Roseberry Scaparelli and then at the same time Elsa Scaparelli's sort of idea of looking at body parts and sort of implementing them into dress. The dress also has like the same sort of beige chiffon that is stemming from the back and creates like a really subtle sort of train. While the dress in and of itself is just like a stunning piece of work, the accessories that Doja Cat has paired with it is just phenomenal. So we have a Saturn bag. Essentially the ring of Saturn is a reference to the spring 2022 Scaparelli Haute Couture collection which looked at the universe and planets and Saturn and all of those sorts of things. It's a really cool bag. It's done in beautiful sort of gold and if you know one thing about Scaparelli it's that the brand sort of main colors are black because Elsa Scaparelli was very very much so not like a fashion designer in the technically trained way. So a lot of her pieces were black and then sort of embroidered or embellished or decorated with gold elements. So that's why you see this dress. It's very simple, it fits fantastically. It's not trying to be some sort of over the top crazy cool thing, but rather the accessories like the nipple pasties or the bag or the gold toe shoes that look like little toes. Cause it's probably a reference to Egyptian royalty and aristocracy that would have like molds of their appendages put into their tombs and sarcophaguses and things like that. The accessories are more or less like kind of kooky. Gold toes in sense of like gold toed shoes, like they're gold toes shoes and the Saturn bag. They're very avant-garde for accessories and I think at the same time they don't overpower the look. They rather just sort of enhance it in that really really subtle way. And I think Doja honestly has just done a very good job of taking something that could be very crazy kooky over the top avant-garde and making it just easy and accessible and simple and brilliant and stunning and gorgeous and ethereal and effervescent and wholeheartedly I think this is her best look yet because it melds that element of stunning gorgeous beauty with the kitschy campy funny personality that she exudes oftentimes in her music or online we haven't finished the video but like this is best dressed of the night 100%. There's no discussion about it. Next up we have Dove Cameron who is wearing Ashlyn, which is an up and coming brand. I believe that they are in the LVMH prize finalists for 2022, which like shout out. It's an American brand. I don't know all that much about it to be completely frank and fair, but the dress is making me want to know about it because it's a fitted strapless gown. It has sort of red curvaceous, I call them like handles, but they're not handles. It's, it's a red curvaceous bodice that then in the center sort of pulls apart, almost like Pangea, allows a sort of sheer and like a pretty good sheer bodice to sort of take over and expose the cleavage and the midriff and the stomach and all of that. And then the bodice keeps curving and then falls into a large bodacious skirt. The skirt is also great because the hips of the skirt come up to the waist. It almost feels like a pushed together wedged version of a pannier skirt. Instead of the pannier sort of folding out and creating big boxy, it almost looks like the pannier was like pushed together with tension to create a slight robust exaggeration of the hips, but higher and pushed up. The red then also degrades into a light and sort of sheer red that exposes a sort of beige little skirt underneath, which 
Again, listen, if it was an all red in that bright sort of vibrant fire truck red, I think it would have been great. The idea of it sort of fading into this like light red with the beige underneath, Overall, I think it's a really cool look. I think it's very interesting. I think it's very different. I also think that like Dove Cameron is on her upswing to becoming a fashion girl. The Disney to fashion pipeline continues to grow. I mean, thank you, Zendaya. And it seems like Dove Cameron is following suit. So good look, very solid. Would like to see what Dove is doing from now on. Next up is Elle King and she is wearing a custom Jonathan Kane look. And it's the same thing to me with the Britney Broski experience. Women that are not this like stick thin model size, I like seeing them in a bodycon dress. Like I like seeing them wearing things that are fitted and not gigantic tents. That means that designers that are making those gigantic tents are more or less scared to create things that fit and flatter a woman who is curvaceous and her body. The neckline is very low, but it's like a nice sort of square neckline, which I think is different and fun and sort of has a very robe a la anglaise, robe a la francaise sort of feeling to it. Very dangerous liaisons. Again, there's a sort of sharp shoulder, very 1940s. Nothing crazy, nothing kooky, nothing over the top. Of course I want like a little bit more, but it fits honestly pretty well. Wish it fit like a little bit better because it's so simple that it should really be like flawless in that regard. But now from El King, I'm kind of expecting like fashion going forward. Next up we have Florence Welch and she is wearing Gucci, I believe. If it's not Gucci, I don't know what Gucci is. It's a cold shoulder, light pink gown, which I love. It has a sort of high little collar neckline and then little flounces running down the front. The sleeve is sort of a tiered sleeve. You can see the cold shoulder cutouts that expose a sort of black lace underneath, which means that as we move down and we can see little sheer panels of the flounces that sort of fall away, there's actually the lace going all the way down. So I presume that it's a lace cat suit, which I love. I think it's a fun sort of way to like take the very pretty, pretty, pretty art nouveau feeling of Florence Welch and the dress and sort of give it a little edge underneath. Nothing super crazy, but just like a little tiny baby edge. Overall, I think it's actually like a beautiful gown. I do. In all seriousness, I think it fits. I think it's very Alessandra Michele, but I think it's very light and effervescent, bubbly. And at the same time, it's sort of very 1970s, but also like very Art Nouveau, very hippie and sort of dippy and bohemian. But at the same time, like bohemian bourgeois. It, it's nice. It, it works. It's, it's good. Like a Florence Welch in a Gucci. Next up is Giveon and he's wearing Bottega Veneta and this is from the fall 2022 collection which is the first by Mathieu Blasi. It's essentially a chevron style. I feel like it's a jacquard and it's double breasted. It has that sort of white and yellow coloring against black. I think it's great. I think it's a different way to take on the sort of traditional double breasted suit. It's interesting. It looks nice. It's still traditional men's where it's just done in different textiles than we're used to. Not black or gray or navy blue, wool, boring, sad, depressing, nobody cares, fabric. I also think the use of the shoe is great. It's still sort of like a menswear looking appropriate shoe, but it also at the same time has a platform. It's thick, it looks like it's also a boot, which always helps. Giveon is a fashion boy. If you are a man wearing Chanel on the red carpet at any point, like you're a fashion boy, like you got it, you have it handled. Giveon is a fashion boy, 100%. We love to see it, we appreciate him. Thank you. Next up, we have not a fashion boy, Jack Harlow. He's wearing Musica, which is a brand I don't know of, and it's a gray wool suit. It has black lapels, a black button down shirt, a black tie, and then on the jacket, there's like a band that wraps around and sort of like tries to create a waist, which is weird, because like, why not just create a waist? Like it's tailoring, so tailor it to create a waist. Shocker. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Oh my god, never heard of that. I mean, listen, like the jacket does fit really well, actually, compared to, you know, what we've seen Jack in recently. Pants are like, okay, they're fine. The shoes, not memorable, not interesting. I just want Jack Harlow to like step it up. It's not really interesting. It's not really memorable. It's not exciting. It's not anything worthy of like really being talked about. That's the part that's upsetting is like every time it seems like he's in a suit, but it's like give a fashion moment. You know what I mean? Do something intriguing, something that references your work. Do something that is memorable and people will care about. It, it seems like we're asking a lot from Jack Carla to do something that somebody might remember in four hours time. Next up we have Janet Jackson wearing custom Tom Brown because Icon. She is wearing what essentially is a cropped jacket. It's a button-down shirt, black tie, little Tom Brown, red, white, and blue stripe going horizontally. There's a corset that I believe 
the shirt is tucked into, or at least the corset is attached to the skirt because the corset is boned, we can see it, and then if we zoom in, we can see that the skirt sort of comes out further than the corset. I feel like they're attached. She's wearing a big Tom Brown shoe. It's, it's a patent leather shoe. It also has cubed blocks. That is a reference to the fall 2022 collection that just came out. You can see a little dachshund hound, which is a reference to the Hector bag. And we have a little lobster, which is also a motif that we saw throughout the collection. Honestly, I love the hat on it. I think it's super fun. I think it adds a little bit of drama, a little bit of dapper ness a little bit of sartorial edge. I think it's a cute look, it's interesting, it's intriguing. I like the fact that we can see quite a lot of cuff of the shirt. A great thing about Tom Brown is those sleeves are shrunk. They're usually much shorter than a traditional menswear jacket sleeve. And so you get to see like a lot more of a white button down cuff, which I know people don't like, but that's kind of the point of the brand. So it looks really, really cool. It's really, really fun. Again, it's just like nice, subtle, simple menswear details put into a women's wear look by incorporating the corset and the skirt. And Janet Jackson, thank you. Next up, we have Kali Uchis, and she is wearing a custom GCDS look. We have a strapless gown. There are opaque cups at the neckline, but they're scalloped, which is intriguing and something that I've never seen, I don't think, before, which I kind of like. There is a boned corset. This is more sheer than it is opaque because we can see what looks like beige of either the skin or either like the corset. The white band that wraps around the waist to like obviously sort of create a much sharper hourglass figure. I feel like we could have done in the beige to give it more of like that illusion, but the white it makes it very apparent that we've like put a white band around the waist, which means then that the corsetry isn't really doing the job that it should be, you know what I mean? Little rib knit sleeves and it looks like there's sort of checks of white going throughout to indicate that like the knit has little white threads and pieces of yarn. The corset comes down to like the upper pelvic area, creates stitched and seamed layering of almost like a quilted vibe. It wraps around. Maybe that's because it's not actually a full dress, but rather it's a two piece, I don't know. And then we have a, what looks like a rib knit, a really sort of short rib knit skirt, which I like. I have to say, I feel like, again, we don't really see a whole lot of knits on red carpet. So when we do appreciate, it's hard to get a knit to sort of work like that. And I think that honestly, considering it's a knit, the skirt fits pretty well. We can obviously, there's like a little bubble of fabric that's excess, but I have to say, considering it's a knit, it fits pretty phenomenally. And again, I just like the elements of the red with the white aspects of yarn throughout. It just gives a tiny little bit of subtlety. I also think the corset for the most part is a phenomenal idea. I think it works really, really well. The one issue again is that white sort of band underneath. Had we just done beige, would have been not a problem. It sort of takes you a little bit out of the illusion of it, but only if you're looking up close. Sleeves I think are cute too. They add a fun sort of element to it. The bag works, the shoes fine. Overall, I think it's a good look. I think it's different. I think it's intriguing. And at the same time, you're doing sort of sheer corsetry up top without it feeling like we've seen it a million times. And I think that's sort of harder to do. So shout out to Caliuchis and GCDS because like, this is a cute look. Next up, we have Kylie Jenner wearing Balmain and we have Travis Scott. Now, Kylie is wearing a look from the fall 2022 Balmain collection. It's a body printed on a very fitted clingy gown. You can see that there's like elements of what look like prints. So it looks like there's a bust area. It looks like there's legs and sort of like an underwear line, but we also have a sort of black band that cuts down at the center and then across at the waist, which I don't really know why that aspect is necessary. I understand that like, again, we're trying to draw the eye to the waist, but I feel like had we just gone full waist in terms of putting the waist motif there and then sort of curving it and letting the black that very obviously sort of is at the sides and at the back of the dress, I would believe, or in the same sort of vein as on the sleeves, that black to sort of help shape that naturally with the motif, you know what I mean? So you'd have that sort of curve of an hourglass, but the black sort of side strips along it wouldn't take you out of the fantasy of, oh, this is a body print, but rather it would just highlight even further the hourglass cut or lack of hourglass cut. I don't think it's the most interesting Kylie Jenner look we've ever seen. I also don't think the gold jewelry over top really works in the same way with like Chloe Bailey worked. I feel like Chloe, that look was so about that leather and that cutout and the jewelry just sort of fitted really, really well. Again, it was just like a subtle little detail. Here, I think that these gold bangles don't really play super well off of this light sort of black on the sleeve. It also doesn't seem to make too much sense with the rest of the look. Like where else are we incorporating gold? I can't see it, so. 
confused. As for Travis, it's pretty much just a gray suit with a little white sweatshirt and a green pant. I think the suit jacket is very casual, fitted well. The sneakers are like fine. I think they work with the look, although I wish that we had like gotten a shirt that matched the exact same sort of like light, light, light beige of the shoe. Overall, forgettable Kylie Jenner look. Nice, but like forgettable Travis Scott look, so. Next up we have Lotto, and she's wearing Zygmunt. This is a custom look, I believe, and we can see that if we look up close, the sort of centerpiece of the gown seems to be this plastic and patent, glossy, boned corset bodice. And then it cuts in to, you know, create a sort of pelvic shape. And then we have above it, at the neckline, draped fabric that creates a bust cup area, but I don't think the haltery straps that come in with the two balls of fabric up top help. Had it maybe been like draped into a flower to resemble some sort of fabric flower or like a rose or something, it would have been intriguing, but it just feels very clunky here and it doesn't allow fluidity to go down. Because again, we want this corset to be the centerpiece. It should be the sort of main aspect. And then the gathered fabric really is just background fodder. But it seems like Eck here is trying to like fight for attention and it's like, no, 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 don't do that. You're fine. You be subtle. You be casual. You be simple. And you let this Megatron corset situation do her thing. The skirt in and of itself, it's fine. It's sort of mermaid skirt that flows out into a long train. Fine, 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 fine. I just think too much here takes away from just the niceness and intrigue of that corset. That's my biggest issue with this whole dress is you're fighting for attention between two areas that shouldn't be fighting for attention because the area that is getting the attention is not the area we want to get attention in this time period. So I appreciate Lotto doing like a fashion moment. I think we're, we're getting there. It just needs to be fine tuned most definitely because we're putting too much emphasis on too many places. Next up we have Liza Koshi. This I believe is an area look from Resort 2022, a resort collection. We can tell that it's area because you have that diamond piping and then the little strips of fringe that aren't really fringe, but rather almost like strips. They look like a cage sort of feeling, but the strips sort of come down. Some of them are piped in the fringe. I think it's a smart way for Aria to play on a house code, which is this Swarovski sort of crystal diamond fringe. And then at the same time, sort of have it not just be fringe, but rather an incorporated element of this cage crop top blazer. And then we have what essentially is a mini skirt, which very on trend, but we can actually see this belt motif that goes in. There are little eyelets, and so it looks like it's a belt, even though it's not technically a belt, or at least I don't believe it's a belt. And then the sort of like clasp of the belt. I don't know if that's a technical term for the area. The, the area that the little thing hits on and holds together with is covered in Swarovski crystals. Overall, for an area look, it's pretty subtle. It's focusing more so on, you know, just the simple elements of nice dress, playing on house codes and doing a little bit differently. I appreciate that. Would I have loved to see Liza in like a big crazy kooky over the top area moment? Yes, but do I think that this is an intriguing veering from both area and Liza Koshi in a fashion sense? Yeah, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Next up we have Machine Gun Kelly, and he's wearing Dolce & Gabbana. And we have Megan Fox, who's wearing David Coma. Now, let's talk about Machine Gun Kelly first, because honestly, I, I wanted to like this look, but it's Dolce, so like, you know, it, it, like it really could be an intriguing look. It's just, we continually put Machine Gun Kelly in Dolce, and so it's like, no. There are so many other brands that are literally Italian and like have gaudy in their history, and we're not, we're not doing that. But, you know, done a whole Cavalli look and it would have been a moment. It would have been, wow, iconic. This, uh, it's Dolce, who cares? We could have done Versace, we could have done Fenty, we could have done anybody, but we did Dolce. That's a you problem. As for Megan Fox, honestly, I don't hate this completely. Like, I think it's a nice David Coma look. Essentially, it's a strapless moment. It's black, it's fitted. The one issue is the obvious beige sheer component that's holding together this deep plunge. I wish we'd just like let it be a deep plunge and not put the sheer. I understand maybe that wouldn't have helped the fabric stay up, but I would have rather that than this little very obvious beige piece. Or even if we just like stitch, stitch picked it and then put in a little swatch that actually, oh, I don't know, like matched your skin tone, that would have been great. The gloves are the sort of intriguing element though. It's crystallized with floral motif that runs up and sort of creates a little bit of a 3D effect on the sleeve. Like Megan Fox should be like earning out look after look after look. This is existing. I don't hate its existence, but certainly not like, wow, amazing. So the Machine Gun Kelly Megan Fox fashion show experience has to like update itself. We need something else because it's getting stale. Next up we have Mary J. Blige. She's wearing 
Julian McDonald. I love Mary J. Blige. I just wish that like this was not what she was wearing. And my only issue is like Mary J. Blige is an icon and I just feel like this dress, it could be Ellie Saab or Zohair Murad or Julie McDonald or like any random brand. And that's my issue is when it just feels like it's something that I can't really distinguish. Oh, this is so-and-so. That sucks. I feel like there should be a shit ton of brands that like are making Mary J. Blige custom moments and experiences. And it's just essentially a bunch of different motifs that try to like contour the body. And I don't think they do a bad job. I do think the shoulders are awkward because they don't fall flat. They rather sort of like curve and you can tell that they're curved up and so it's kind of like awkward whereas a lot of the shoulders that we've seen have been very sharp little shoulders i think those are much better than this like weird bump that comes up and then moves down the motifs aren't like particularly interesting or intriguing or memorable whatsoever not the mary j blige experience that we deserve or want but mostly deserve next up we have megan the stallion wearing custom you glare now in my opinion this dress is actually a fun nod to a vintage Mugler look. I would say it's probably a reference to Spring 1998 Haute Couture by Thierry Mugler because as we can see there is a loose sight plastic wrap around strap which in my opinion is a reference to Spring 1998. It seems like what Casey Cadwallader has done instead of it being a sort of very asymmetrical slip dress is instead turn it into a very draped and gathered experience. One side is a darker sort of brown and it's horizontal and then the other side is a sort of light beige and it's vertical and sort of moves in, knots itself and we can see at the back and there's that clear piece of the strap that hangs itself around and then sort of comes around Megan's neck and descends down. I think it's a cute reference most definitely and then as for this mini skirt we have what looks like a cutout but these two sort of reflective metal pieces or maybe they're also sort of lucite plastic, clear, glassy looking things come down and create that sort of view. And then the skirt is actually gathered that way, sort of comes around and creates a train that falls down. Colors, it's a black, a sort of light, 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 beige and then a sort of brown that's really a melding of the black and the light beige to me does sort of reference current Casey Cadwallader color palette feels and vibes. The look in and of itself is not the usual Cadwallader new glare that we expect, which is the bodysuits and the contouring and all of that. But I do think that it's interesting enough. I do think it's intriguing. I do think it's sort of different. And I'm wondering if it's signaling for us that like on the red carpet, we'll see a lot more sort of references to vintage new glare of the past. Overall, I like the nod. I like the reference. Again, I still want Megan to like push and keep sort of moving and keep sort of growing in her fashion space. But I think this is a good step for Megan as of recent. So. Happy with it. Megan has to keep the momentum going. We need some hot girl momentum in a fashion context. Next up we have Shensia and she is wearing Dupetza. Now this is a gold, sort of very liquid gathered crop top corset bustier experience. As we can tell, it's very, very draped. It looks very sort of wet and watery and fluid and languid, very Dupetza. I like also the shape of the corset top bustier because it does feel very sort of corset like but at the same time because you have this drape this fabric over top you don't really see the boning instead we sort of allow the texture of this drape to be the centerfold and then the skirt obviously has a very sort of signature depezza drape too but the thing that's always interesting about a depezza drape is it always feels like there's the drape over top and then there's a clingy sort of skirt underneath and so that's why we can see that there's like a part of the thigh that exists and sort of pokes out and showcases itself again i just think the gold is interesting to see again i like when celebrities go out and sort of wear young cool up-and-coming designers i always like to see a depezza moment chensia looks like an ancient grecian goddess just done in gold leaf instead of your usual marble or stone next up we have tayana taylor she is wearing givenchy and balenciaga i love this look i think it's super great i think it's super fun and again it's a little bit more casual i would say than a lot of the looks that we've seen but i don't think that's wholly a bad thing chain link givenchy sort of necklace it looks like it's a cuban chain link it's just been enlarged and exaggerated in size there's a sheer little black bra top a nipple pasty underneath but the pants are really cool i like the fact that they're very low waist and in matthew williams fashion we have a shit ton of hardware i mean the belt in and of itself is sort of grommeted but at the same time it looks like the belt is also made up of like different strange things you would go to home depot and find and then put together if you were going to home depot to find random pieces of hardware and turn them into a belt which 
Honestly, I kind of appreciate. Listen, let straight male designers find inspiration in Home Depot. I think it's interesting. We also have the Givenchy Now signature lock. Chains that move in and out and sort of recreate the pocket watch to a degree. And then there's a lot of studage going on on the black leather pants. We have sort of metal rings and again, more locks and all of that. It's very Spencer's, but high fashion. And in a decision that I think is kind of fantastic, there are Balenciaga platform boots that have the Balenciaga plate on them on the front and it says Balenciaga. And I think it's a great way to sort of finish up this look. Uh, yeah, I understand for some people, the whole idea of mixing brands is not really great on the red carpet because you know, when you lend, you want it to just be one brand. But I think this is styling, controversial opinion, I know, but that is styling is pairing different things together that are not just all straight looks off the runway into a moment. No, 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 no. We're incorporating different elements that work together and play together super duper well, even if they're not from the same brand. I love to see it. Very happy about it. Think it's a moment. Think we need more of it. Shout out to Tayana Taylor. Great look, secondary in my opinion to one Doja Cat and Scaparelli. And finally, we have Ty Dolla Sign. He is wearing essentially a, a normal suit, but his top is not a button down. Thank you. It is a chainmail top that is degraded and degraded and you can see through it. I think it's great. I think it's super fun. I feel like oftentimes people would be like, oh, that's only for women. Women will wear dresses like that. Da, 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 da. No. no, 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 I don't care. It looks great. He looks fantastic. It's literally a tank top made out of chains. Amazing. Everybody else is gonna wear, lots of men would wear a suit, a simple black suit and a tank top underneath. We wouldn't think that's weird. Why is it weird that it's made out of chains? Huh? It's not, because it's a good look. It's a moment, very proud. And the boot, very, very, very cute. Makes sense, all black, leather pants, goes together like a feather. Thank you, Ty Dolla Sign. You make me happy. And now let's do best and worst, I mean best, Obviously we know I'm giving to Doge Cat and Scaparelli. Very solid runner up, Tayana Taylor and Givenchy and Balenciaga. As for worst, this one's kind of hard because it wasn't that bad actually, which is shocking. Giving it to Jack Harlow. Just blah, uninteresting, not appealing. And I think this is a really good red carpet where we're seeing fashion does not have to be boring. Even if you're a rapper, step it up, sir. Step it up. I'm going hard on Jack Harlow all of a sudden. He's my new fashion punching bag. But it's because I want better for him. That's why. That's the only reason why. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. And TTYL.